Michael Jackson did that shit. Not because I knew him or anything like that. I have reason to believe that when you make over about $10 million, a little spirit comes on your shoulder and goes, touch kids. And you go, what? And he's like, touch kids. And then you touch kids. This is my third time recording it, so if anyone says anything about the goddamn fucking smoke alarm, you're getting blocked with immediate alacrity. You know, I've always had an awkward relationship with Beyonce. I just never really got the hype. With the exception of Blinding Lights era weekend, no one's really been able to match Beyonce in the weight of her ethos. Taylor Swift or Drake might technically sell more records, but people hate those guys. They're divisive. Beyonce is universally beloved in a way that scared slash scares me. Why does she get to be God? Why does MJ? Why does anyone? I truly believe if she ran over me with her car right now, people would be mad, but it would be largely inconsequential to her larger legacy. Can someone really be talented enough to earn that kind of adoration? Beyonce is untouchable. And I never really got to why, especially after listening to Renaissance. I am, honestly speaking, still underwhelmed by that album. Why is it called Renaissance? Why is that random ass dance song called America Has a Problem? At the time, it just seemed to me as a generic house album masquerading as something profound or deep. And so when Cowboy Carter came around, I approached it with that same mindset. And at first, I was vindicated. She dropped Texas Hold'em and I scoffed. What the hell was this underwhelming, profoundly unremarkable ass track? And I say this as an Ed Sheeran and Post Malone fan. The damn thing wasn't even catchy. I was right. I told y'all, this woman is me. And then she dropped 16 carriages and I shut my black ass up immediately. That shit was fantastic. And for the most part, so was the entire album. The second half of Daughter was so sickeningly impressive that it made me angry. Clearly, this required a talent from you, but you get off on making me feel unfathomably talentless? Jesus. And so, I hate to admit it, but I got it. I got how Beyonce could be elevated to her status, and honestly, I got it even before I heard Cowboy Carter. When writing this essay, I had to ask myself, if Earl Sweatshirt deleted my Baldur's Gate save files, or if John Green called me the N-word, would I still be a fan? And jokes apart, to my surprise, the answer wasn't as black and white as it should have been. I love Baldur's Gate. I think there are generally two reasons why we turn famous people into deities. One their capacity to amaze. Whether it be Michael Jackson or Zendaya, we love the spectacle of someone so beautiful, so talented, so incandescent that we can't look away. We obviously could never reach their level. There's something about them that makes them superior to us, other than, you know, millions of dollars. They are a castle on the hill, proof that there's no point in building your pathetic little shack when there's already something so beautiful to stare at an uncatchable beacon like a sunset or adolescence why bother chasing it just sit there and gape and then there's two art saves people john green's turtles all the way down and our sweatshirts solace are a pillar are a pillar <laughs> Just die in the fire, little nigga. You're not built for this. Our pillars in the infinite spiraling labyrinth I call a consciousness. They brought me hope when my arms were too weak to dig for some. Of course I placed them on a pedestal. How could I not? They were the light at the end of the tunnel. I played Riot on loop over and over again. And then I opened my eyes and found out, miraculously, I was still alive. For some people, they adore these celebrities for both reasons. People like Kendrick or Beyonce attract stands that look to them as a savior and as a spectacle. For people like those, the stages these celebrities perform at are an altar, divinity crystallized, salvation. My mouth hurts. If this tick doesn't work, I'm keeping it. I'm keeping it. Just like that, just like that. The problem is, when we raise people high enough, they turn into aircraft. 
celestials even, and we turn into ants. Both parties lose nuance. Beyonce is untouchable because she is Beyonce. No further clarification is needed. She has become a law, like gravity or time. I don't actually know if Michael Jackson touched those kids or not. I like to joke that he did because I'm afraid of the truth. The truth is, if he wanted to, who was gonna stop him? Me? You? We know for a fact that he was sleeping in the same beds as those kids that weren't his. If Justin Bieber or Ed Sheeran did that shit, would we as a society still look at them the same way? I'm not talking about money. I'm talking about respect. About worship. MJ was more talented than I could ever imagine. But is it possible for someone to be talented enough to be given such freedom? Such influence? How many people must scream a man's name at once before he can no longer hear his conscience? I went to see Earl Sweatshirt perform last year. It wasn't the first concert I attended, but it was the first one where I had an intense adoration for the artist. He came out on stage and it was such a jarring moment for me. There he was. He looked like an old sweaty uncle. I could smell the weed on him from several meters away. There he was, in the flesh, his words imprinted onto my heart like handprints in wet cement. There he was, there he was. I left the concert early. I'm not the biggest fan of concerts as it would appear. Too loud, too many sweaty girls rubbing up on you. I realized it wasn't my scene and I realized Earl Sweatshirt wasn't my salvation. He didn't save me. He just made me realize I could save myself because I saw him. I saw him. There he was, loud, sweaty, glowing, human, flesh, blood, bone. On the walk home, I dodged the Atlanta crackheads and thought of those lyrics that meant so much to me. On the walk home, I looked down at my hands and I laughed. How was I just noticing it? The bastards had been holding God this whole time. Hello. Don't don't leave. I'm begging you. I'm a published author. This is my book, The Imaginary Parts of Lucifer Heart. It's about a young boy named Toby who has to learn to stop putting women on a pedestal and stop using them as an escape from his past. Writing this book kind of changed my life and it would mean the world to me if you picked it up and gave it a review. The book is only like four dollars on Amazon, so it's you know what I'm saying. What's gonna stop you? I also have a Patreon if you care about that. I don't there's like extra videos there, but you buy my book. That's important.